Well, I don't know exactly how today is gonna go, but what I do know is I have a long, busy day in front of me. Today, I've gotta run every adult cow through the chute, and then we're gonna ship a bunch of them over to the winter pasture. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Well, I've gone through and I have lubricated everything on the squeeze chute that moves. I've lubed up everything on these gates to get it all smooth and easy to operate. You know, I've found that it takes a little bit of extra time when you're getting going in the morning to go around and do all that. But at the end of the day, you're sure glad that you did it because the gates feel lighter, the lever on the chute feels lighter, everything is just easier to operate. I think I've got 36 bred cows out here and one bull and I'm going to be running them all through here by myself. So the strategy that I have and the mindset that I try to maintain is to just not be in a hurry. There's no need for me to get excited because that gets them excited and in the end it just doesn't do anybody any good. So sometimes that is hard to remember because you get frustrated but if i start pushing them or myself that's when people start getting hurt mostly me and we don't want that i think what i'm doing right now is probably the hardest part and that is gathering everybody up and getting them back in this working corral they kind of know if i take them back in there that it's it's going to mean running through the chute and they don't really like doing that too much, especially when they think that they should be eating their breakfast right now. Come on, big boy. Come on, big boy. Well, kind of starting to move the right way. We continue to move the right way. Come on, you guys. Hey, hey. But I've got them in this corner and usually if i wait long enough and i can hold them here they eventually will go the right way i found that trying to push them doesn't always give you the results you want but if you just kind of sit here and wait they start going see that the sun's glaring pretty bad but ah dang it Always got to have a problem, child, don't you? But I think it's going to work out. Go on, big boy. I'm going to get you too. Here I am. Here I am. Got a few kind of working their way into the tub so if i can grab them perfect group going in hey hey now hey Today the cattle are only getting one vaccination, which is uh, Ultra Bach 8, which is basically just a generic 8-way. And then the other thing that they will be getting done to them is if they have lost an ear tag or if their ear tag is especially hard to read, I'm going to replace it. Boy, if they were all that you lost your hearing. Well, it just so happens that the very first cow through the chute is missing her ear tag. Now, because her markings are somewhat unique, I know what number she is. She's number 52. And I guess one might say that 
you know in a small herd like this when you pretty much know every cow that you have you don't really need to number them but the reason that i like to do that is for my own records it's a lot easier to just say number 52 than it is to say the tall perford looking cow you know and then also when i'm uh, talking about them with other people it's a lot easier to just use a number and i'm going to be trying some new ear tags this year that you just write the number on the tag with a paint pen i guess i'm not real hopeful that these are going to work that great but we're going to try because if they do that it's, it's actually a way better way to do it so in my very neatest handwriting your friend these two can wait back here and i'll keep bringing cattle back until i got a trailer load and then i'll run them all up in the trailer and we'll head over come on all right that's a load let's see if we can get them in the trailer in there you gotta want it hey hey come on girl oh there went my ankle come on hey We got us a load here there's seven cows in the trailer and i think five of them are second calf heifers so they're pretty small they're, it actually looks like i could probably have fit another one in there but um seven is fine because we're going to take 20 all together so that's two loads of seven and one load of six a sight that never gets old all right let's go get the next load
All right, here we go again. Old number seven here may look pretty calm and gentle, and right now she is. You can tell she's a really old cow. She's actually starting to get some gray hair on her face. But in the entire herd, this is the only cow that has ever tried to attack me with actual anger in her eyes. I probably shouldn't keep her, but she's only done that one time and she was protecting a calf, or so she thought. So I gave her a pass on it. Ever since then, she's been fine, but just because she did show me that one time, I don't send her back to the winter pasture. She's gonna stay here. You sure seem sweet now, don't you? Yeah, you do. Well, the camera ran out of batteries, but looky there, we got another load. Let's go drop them off. Load number two. I don't know why that ear tag looks comically big now. <laughs> All right, let's go get the last load. Well, the group is dwindling little by little. Uh, we've got one more load left to go over there of six, and that'll give me a total of 20 at the winter pasture and then I'm not sure how many are left in here but we'll have to run everyone through the chute regardless of if they're going or not and then we'll be done so let's let's keep moving with this okay we got number 19 number 30 and number 50 so these girls are all good they can all go to the winter pasture the only cows that I don't send over there are ones that I know are a little bit on the wild side, ones that are maybe tough on fences, um, or any other sort of problems. First calf heifers obviously aren't going to go because I want them to be here when they calve. But all these girls I think can go. Hey, if you back up, I can shut this the rest of the way, you know. That's how that works. All right, this is the last one I need to make a load of six, so let's give her her shot and get her in the trailer. No kicking, no kicking. Oh, no way. Well, looks like we got six left. We'll see how they do.
that is it. Let's get this last load delivered to the winter pasture and we can call it a day. A little habit that I've kind of made is I always double check the trailer before leaving the ranch and getting out on the road. And the reason that I want to do it here is because if there happens to be a problem or this gate happens to be open or not latched properly or something and cows are able to get out of the trailer, you want them to get out while they're at home because if they get out here, they're not gonna go anywhere. If they got out at a stop sign or something like that down the road, then you would have a real mess on your hands because they wouldn't know where to go to be home. But everything looks good, so I think we can hit the road. day now we got all the cattle moved yesterday without much of a problem and I always kind of laugh after I get that job done because this manger just seems so empty now I mean they think there's only 17 cows in here sure makes feeding a lot easier in the morning but just because all the cows are moved over there that does not mean that all the work is done yet I still need to run over there today drop them off some Redmond salt blocks and then there is one fence line along the toe of the levee that I still need to check. I'm hoping that there's enough feed there that they haven't went over and checked before me. Um, but yeah, we better run over there and do that. Make sure there's no holes where they might be tempted to go see what's on the other side. First thing that I do every time I show up here at the winter pasture is count the cows and make sure that they're all here. Thank you. I've got 20 here, so I got nothing to worry about. Salt block placement actually does matter. If you can put it near drinking water, then they'll actually consume more of it, which is kind of what we want. So we always put the blocks here because normally there's a pond over here but as you can see this year the pond is dry at least for now we've got some storms forecast in the near future so I'm hoping that the uh, water table will rise a little bit and this pond will fill up but we'll just kind of have to see anyway I'm gonna leave a salt block here because they're used to them being here and I'm gonna put one other one by their water trough So the fence in question is this fence down here at the bottom of the levee. Fortunately, we have a lot of what I call natural fence down here, which is this brush and especially the berry vines that the cattle would have to be really motivated to want to push through. So since we have plenty of feed down here, I'm not too worried about anybody trying to escape, but we're going to walk this fence line anyway, just to see what we've got. There's barbed wire in there, but I don't think we need it. One thing to watch for that can be problematic on this fence line especially is deer trails. Because usually, wherever deer make a trail through here, they'll end up jumping the fence and then a lot of times they'll end up breaking the wire and it kind of creates a weak spot in the fence. What's bad about it though, is that cattle 
naturally will follow those trails. So if they come across a deer trail and start following it and it leads them right to the fence where there is now a broken wire, it creates a really bad spot in the fence and somewhere where they're pretty likely to get through. So as I'm walking down here, I'm looking for trails um, that lead towards the fence because I know that's gonna be probably something that I need to look at. So if you can see down there where the two T posts are, that's the hole that they got through a couple years ago when they all got out and got in with the neighbor's cattle. So that's patched now, but there is still kind of a, a trail leading up to that. So that'll be something that I have to watch. Last year we hot wired this whole fence off to keep them out of here. So I'm hoping that they don't really remember where that hole is, but time will just kind of have to tell on that. All right, well, we made it down to the end and everything actually looked pretty good. Nothing that I feel like requires immediate attention. A couple of spots maybe to keep an eye on though, once the feed starts getting short. So now we're gonna take the long walk back to the side-by-side. -side. That's all right, because Callie seems to be having fun out here. Another good thing about walking a fence line like that is that you just you kind of see things that you wouldn't see if you were driving. Like for instance, I'm noticing how much feed is out here. Now granted, we just brought the cattle yesterday, so obviously they haven't made a dent in it yet. But I can't remember another year in the past when we brought them over here that we had this much grass right off the bat. All right, get in. A bit of an angle there but you did it good job well the cows have been delivered the fence checks out all right i think we can call it a day thanks for hanging out with me today guys and i hope i'll see you again on farmer tyler ranch